In 1882, famed philosopher and mustache enthusiast Friedrich Nietzsche declared the famous quote, God is dead in his writings, the gay science. In the parable of the madman, he writes, where is God, he cried, I will tell you. We have killed him, you and I, all of us are his murderers. So what did Nietzsche mean by this, and was he right? First, we'll need some background to understand what sort of world Nietzsche was living in. In the late 19th century, Friedrich Nietzsche observed a world undergoing significant transformation. This period was marked by rapid advancements in science and technology, the rise of industrialization, and a growing emphasis on reason and empirical evidence. Traditional religious beliefs, which had long provided a framework for understanding the world and one place in it, were being increasingly scrutinized and challenged. The scientific revolution of the 17th and 18th centuries laid the groundwork for this shift. Figures like Isaac Newton, Galileo Galilei, and later Charles Darwin, through his theory of evolution, provided natural explanations for phenomena that were previously attributed to divine intervention. The publication of Darwin's On the Origin of Species in 1859 particularly shook the foundations of religious belief, proposing that life evolved through natural selection rather than being created by a divine being. At the same time, the Industrial Revolution was transforming societies from agrarian economies to industrial powerhouses. Urbanization increased, and with it came new social challenges and a sense of alienation among many people. The traditional community structures and religious institutions that once provided social cohesion were now being overshadowed by the demands of a rapidly modernizing world. Philosophically, the Enlightenment had already begun to champion reason, individualism, and skepticism of authority, including the Church. Thinkers like Voltaire, Immanuel Kant, and David Hume questioned established religious dogmas and promoted a worldview based on reason and empirical evidence. By Nietzsche's time, these intellectual and social shifts had reached a critical mass. He saw that the rise of secularism and the decline of religious authority were creating a void in the moral and existential fabric of society. People were increasingly turning to science and rationality for answers, but this also led to a sense of disorientation and a fundamental loss of meaning. Nietzsche's declaration that God is dead was not merely a critique of religion, but a commentary on the profound cultural and existential crisis that he believed was unfolding. He recognized the collapse of traditional religious values would leave a vacuum that could lead to nihilism, the belief that life is inherently meaningless. I personally believe this quote is often used out of context by internet atheists. I was one myself at one point, the mildness of my teenage rebellion, but the misuse of this quote is seen as a victorious statement, a rallying cry for reason and humanism. God is dead. Therefore, we have severed the chains of ideologies that were holding back humanity's progress. This fundamental misunderstanding comes from the quote being taken out of context. I know, imagine that. Nietzsche foresaw the darkness of reason moving to engulf the Western world after the death of God. He writes, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. How should we comfort ourselves, the murderer of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owed has been bled to death under our knives. Who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to cleanse ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is it not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must we ourselves not become gods, simply to appear worthy of it? As one can see from the tone, and maybe the melodramatic nature of it, this is not the slaying of a dragon, but the murder of something that bound humanity together. If God is dead, then who can forgive us? Who can we dedicate great festivals and works of art to? He suggests that humanity must rise to the level of God in order to justify the death of the previous one but the act of doing so is likely too much for man to attain. People are very flawed and irrational creatures. There's simply no way for us to insert ourselves into the role of an omnipotent creator. To fully grasp Nietzsche's perspective, we should consider the influence of another monumental figure in philosophy, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Hegel's dialectical method and his view of history as a rational process deeply impacted Nietzsche. Hegel saw history as a progression of ideas, accumulating into the realization of human freedom and self-consciousness. For Hegel, the divine was not a transcendent being, but an unfolding process within history itself. Nietzsche, however, took Hegel's ideas in a different direction. 
While Hegel believed in a sort of ultimate reconciliation, Nietzsche saw the death of God as a rupture, a point of no return that led to existential despair and the necessity for a new kind of human being, the Ubermensch or Overman. Nietzsche's proclamation can be seen as a reaction against Hegelian optimism and a challenge to the idea that history naturally leads to a rational and just end. The death of God profoundly influenced the rise of nihilism. And nihilism is the belief that life is inherently meaningless, that there's no objective order or purpose in the universe. Nietzsche recognized that the death of God would lead to a moral and existential vacuum. Without a divine anchor, traditional values and meanings lose their foundation, leading many to a state of despair and meaninglessness. He wrote extensively about this crisis, fearing that without new values to replace the old ones, society would succumb to nihilism. Nietzsche saw this as both a danger and an opportunity. He challenged humanity to create their own values and find meaning in a godless world. The struggle against nihilism and the search for meaning will be the focus of a future video, so stay tuned for a deeper dive into that interesting topic. Not long after the famous proclamation, humanity plunged into one of the bloodiest centuries of all time. With God being dead, people began to search elsewhere for something to believe in. The state, ideologies, institutions, charismatic leaders, and those things effectively become your religion, meaning that they're just so important that you are willing to die for them. To have your ideology questioned is the equivalent of insulting your whole worldview and how you frame yourself in it. Now, it wasn't about dying to protect a higher order or living a good life for a chance at heaven. It was about serving your state, your country, or whatever ideology you grew up in. The 20th century and the religionization of ideology led to a staggering loss of life, far more than the wars of religion in the past. For instance, the Thirty Years' War, which took place in 1618 to 1648, was one of the most destructive religious wars in Europe and resulted in an estimated 8 million deaths. In stark contrast, the ideologically driven conflicts of the 20th century caused unprecedented casualties. With World War I, about 20 million, World War II, 70 to 85 million, and a few of these other wars that I have on screen, along with their death tolls. These conflicts were given by ideologies such as Nazism, Communism, unfettered capitalism, and imperialism, which all became sort of secular religion. The scale of death and destruction far exceeded that of earlier religious conflicts. The advancement of weaponry and military tactics certainly played a role, but the ideological fervor behind these conflicts, they simply can't be ignored. These man-made gods of the 20th century proved to be far more deadly than the ones of old. In today's world, we still grapple with finding meaning in a secular age. With rising individualism and declining religious affiliation, Nietzsche's warning feels more pertinent than ever. What fills the void for us now? Technology, celebrity culture, political ideologies? What can we take away from all this? Well, I would say that humanity needs God the specifics of which we can say for another video, uh, maybe. God being, in this case, not referring to a particular belief system, but rather a general belief in the divine, the transcendent. It is clear from the last 100 years or so that humanity cannot be trusted to take care of ourselves and our planet with gods of our own making. We are deeply flawed and easily moved by base desires. The God that should lead civilization should give humanity hope of something greater, to move forward together, something that can give us strength in this very difficult world. For if a man makes God, he makes only monsters. So what do you think? Is Nietzsche's view of a godless world inevitable, or can we find new ways to create meaning and community? If you liked what you heard, please drop a like down below, and if you didn't and think I'm a big dummy head, let me know in the comments and we can have it out in what I'm sure will be civilized discourse. This is my first philosophical video of sorts, so I'm ironing out the kinks in my writing. I'm sure I'll get less clumsy the more I go on, so please be patient with me. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, goodbye.